I grew up on film music of John Williams and Jerry Goldsmith and, and, and even Horner um, as, as he came along on the scene. So it's that traditional idea of scoring films, which, which um, you know, is somewhat fallen by the wayside and, and um, in, in lieu of, you know, drum loops and synthesizer tracks, which is fine as a legitimate part of the orchestra, but I try to, uh, my, my, I would like to be the, you know, the, the next generation of, the next John Williams, Jerry Goldsmith kind of stylistic composer. And, and so the idea behind this movie, because Brian, of course, we both love the films of the 70s and 80s, and um, we often bring up uh, Star Trek II or Empire Strikes Back and those kind of things. We wanted the score to harken back to that era, but still feel current today. So the challenge was how do you, how do you keep that, that scoring sensibility alive um, with, with, uh, with, with strong orchestral themes for characters um, and not seem dated? So that's, that, that was the challenge, to sort of, uh, again, keep that style of film scoring alive. People ask, well, how do you, what's your process? And I, I, I don't know what my process is. My process is panic, basically. You sit at the keyboard and you just, because you have, you look at the clock, and you're like, oh my God, I have no time, and you just do. I'd like to say I'm this auteur who, as I'm editing the film, I'm thinking of the score, and it's, and, you know, it's, infl but it's really not. I, I, I completely have to be schizophrenic and, and wear one hat one day, another hat the other day. And so when I'm, when I'm editing the film, um, my one and only concern is, is, is editing the sequences, ironically, to work the best they can without score. Most of the characters have a theme or, or, a, or a fragment of a theme, which like well, motif or whatever. Um, the theme itself, which represents all the X-Men. to sort of bring in a little more humanity into the theme, um, but still keep the attitude the same as the, as the original like cartoon series and the last film. Keep the same attitude, but kind of bring in a little more um, well, humanity to, into it. Um, and that's, I try to hearken in, in that theme throughout the film as much as I can. Um, and that sort of, again, represents all of the X-Men collectively. Jean Grey um, has probably um, the most, one of the most present themes in the film because she plays a, a big role in this movie. I wanted to, to really develop a, a nice theme for her that became the cornerstone of, of the score. Nightcrawler has his own theme too, and he's a very tender character. You don't think that in the beginning of the film, but you realize he's a really uh, tender, um, very religious, devout um, character in the movie. Um, who's he's from Germany, and and so I have some uh, some slight hints at that. My favorite thing to do for, for evil, quote unquote, characters is to bring something else in and not just straight sinister music because there's always some reason they're evil uh, or, or, or a bad character. Uh, there's a character named Pyro. He's a troubled character because you get a sense that he's not had the best uh, upbringing. to have some, in an odd way, some sense of longing in his theme because he's, it just enriches the, the character. Mystique has a little motif, uh, sort of a 
erotica, exotic, yet dark uh, thing, with, with basically characterized by harp and, um, and uh, a solo um, soloist. You know, sort of give her a sort of this erotic but, but evil feel. And um, Magneto has just some chords that represent him as a character. struggle is the thematic material. The part that's fun for me is actually the orchestration and, and taking the, the theme I've written and then adding the bells and whistles, so to speak, you know, the flourishes and who does what. And that, that's, that's the fun part. And to me, that's, that often is, um, you can have the same theme, but in my opinion, four different scores just based upon how you do the orchestration. And so the orchestration's a big, a big part of it for me. Obviously, the keyboard, I do synthesized renderings, so I, I pretty much know how it's going to sound or how I want it to sound, because it's not just piano on the keyboard. I'm, I'm integrating synthesized strings and flutes and percussion and whatever. Um, but there's nothing like the real orchestra. So when it's, when it's happening with the orchestra, there's nothing like it. When it's not quite happening, it can be uh, a very frustrating thing to try to get it, ironically, to sound like, like you have it in your head. by the way. Damon, I, Patrick, I Damon's our mag... Everyone knows Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows Brian. Hello. No, 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 no. It's, uh, this is a great privilege. Thanks for letting us come in and listen. It's a big treat. It's tiny. The, the group's smaller today. However beautiful and powerful they're very... Could I do that? Should, please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'd be here for a year. I've been on, I've been on this long, yeah. long, long time. Four you know, days Damon, ago. we've known since Damon. Damon was 18, and 19. he was 19, and he was uh, orchestrating with John, and from the very beginning, and oh. now he's conducting because he's brilliant at it. And John, John has no other friends. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much his name. And now here comes John. Here comes John. We've sort of, in a way, we've created each other, and uh, you know, when we, we sort of, our sensibilities sort of morph years ago, and so I don't know what part of me influenced him and what part of him influenced me, but um, so we, we pretty much see things in the same way creatively. We have our differences, and which um, which offset each other. You know, he tends to be a little more cold when he directs and maybe I would, but then I offset that with bringing more heart in with the score. And so it, uh, it actually creates a good combination. Had he gone to the set and, and you know, done the same thing I would have done with the score, maybe it would have been too much in one direction. So um, I think it's a good offset. But in terms of taste, I think we are 98% of the time in line. And I want to assure you, that I don't normally go around dressed like this. This, this is not, shooting today. This is not my personal outfit. This is Professor Xavier. I, I, I wouldn't wear electric blue. It's so yeah. Fancy. Actually, we're shooting scene today that you'll be scoring probably days before the film's release. So look forward to it. It's quite a anyway, thanks Thank very, very much. much. Thank you for letting you. us be. Thank thanks. Bye. You know, I'm a Star Trek fan, so when I would go see the original Star Trek films, it was, you know, always a pleasure because it's a, a larger-than-life experience than the original series was, and I think this 
in essence, it's almost a larger than life experience than the first movie was because it's, it's a little wider scope in, in, its, in, in its ambitions as well.